that I am today without the experiences that I had in New York City. Mr. That man helped me understand life. He helped me understand what it was to be an artist. He helped me understand what it, be, what it was to be passionate about something. He, he helped me understand culture. Years before two of Sean Diddy Combs' homes were raided in connection to a federal sex trafficking investigation, there was conversation about what went on at the rapper's residences. We had, we, um, we want to thank you, come here, don't, don't sit on the bed at night, no homo, no, just, just don't get close to the bed, don't get close to the bed, but it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man, man, you, you, it's been a pleasure, you didn't have to do it, you did it. No, no, I definitely didn't have to do it, I, I definitely didn't have to, uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed, uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did, I'm just gonna, if we can, just, let's, let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not, I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed, at all. I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the... All for the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. Now he's one of the richest stars in the world. Yo, what the f did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this but me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was f stupid. Listen. In late 2023, the rapper's ex girlfriend, Cassie, filed a lawsuit accusing him of rape and repeated physical abuse throughout their relationship. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. There is no audio. I mean, I can definitely provide context around like this incident. Mm -hmm. um, Cassie com confided in me about this incident when I was working with her around this time, around 2016. We were working on her sophomore album and um, she told me about this situation. Uh, their relationship was um, volatile for sure. Um, and he, like you could tell that she was afraid of him you know, and that there was a lot of control. And um, yeah, I don't, I just, sorry, it's, it's witnessing, like seeing, What do you feel, feeling? <clears throat> well, I mean, the thing is, is like, like <coughs> I said, this is something that, that Cassie um, confided in me about back then. And like the one thing specifically that always stuck out to me about the story was him throwing the vase at her and to see it, like to see, like I remember her saying, you know, you know, I remember it being at the Intercontinental. I remember the, like that whole, the whole situation, but to, to like know a story is one thing, but to see it is something different. And then also to see it, somebody that you care about, like, you know, it's that a, a video of my friend getting violently assaulted is all over the world and no one was there to help her and it just Stars have since then come out against Diddy in several allegations. From Aubrey O'Day claiming that Diddy fired her from the girl group Danity Kane in 2008 because she wouldn't do things that were expected of her outside of work, to Wendy Williams speculating that Diddy may have exhibited controlling behavior toward Cassie. I just want to throw you the facts, okay? Sure. So this is long after we have two double platinum albums, $14, $15 an album from two million albums is, what is the math on that, 48 million? And this benevolent man who has this now had a change of heart and has decided to pay us as talent, we only get the amounts due since Sony bought our catalog. Okay. So streaming for the past couple years, 
it's about $800, $900. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. I would like to do a documentary for Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, a streaming site. I offered some of the girls, hey, if you need eight, nine hundred bucks, I'll give it to you. Don't sign this. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. She talking about Diddy. That's what these down low b was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the 90s, the homo thug. So you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever is that him or is that shout Peter out Ryan? to Wendy Williams? Not to mention Cat Williams talking about Diddy during his Club Shape podcast. Right? I want you tell it. No, you. No, the best. I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You proving it here today. <laughs> as much as I'm proving it, you proving it. You proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't. People say that he lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him 50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times, four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. Come I, on. I did. Oh, I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm I, so I mean, can, freely. Can, 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 I need, can I need another one? You, here, get you another Thank one. Thank you, too, sir. Can. Thank you. Come. Pine, who goes by Virginia V, claimed during a 2019 appearance on Unwind with Tasha K that Diddy once physically assaulted her. Hein also claimed that Diddy was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive during their five-year relationship. And so I turned over to Meek and I said, happy birthday. He put his hand out and he was like, thank you. So I reached his hand and shook it. And as I shook Meek's hand, he turned around and saw it and he got so mad. Wow. And um, and then we, we probably like stayed like, 20 minutes after that happened and then when we got in the car he like grabbed my hair we were in the um one of those escalade trucks okay so i was sitting on this side he was on the other side and he like grabbed my hair and like cussed me out um for doing that he was like why the fuck can i cuss yeah oh he was like why the fuck you like you shaking his hand for like just so stuff it, like it was that. just I was like, like a jealous rage. Yeah, I was like, I, I was saying? just saying happy birthday, nothing else. He thought, I think he thought I was trying to be sneaky behind his back because I like reached over mm -hmm. when he like leaned forward to talk to somebody else. So he thought I was trying to be sneaky. And you were how old at this time? Um, I was 22 probably. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then, um, he did this so King Los was sitting in the back. Okay. And then when we got to the hotel, um, it got even worse. And um, he like, he like tried to, he took one of my sh heels and tried to throw it at me. And then he like, like mushed my face and like really hard and made my nose bleed. Wow. And the only person that ever, every time me and he like, we get into like fights like that. The only person that ever helped me was um, D Rock. Everyone else just kind of just allowed it to happen and just like looked the other way. Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23, right before the Adult Survivors Act expired. She says she and a friend met comps and singer songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. The woman who filed a complaint in Hall back in November, who was at the time listed only as Jane Doe, has now amended her complaint, and now she's added further details telling her name and her age at the time of the alleged assault. In the lawsuit, she recalled how Diddy and Aaron Hall were very handsy and flirtatious with her and her friend. And this all happened at an event uh, that was hosted by MCA. They afterwards went to Aaron Hall's apartment. Uh, please pay attention. 
She says once she got to the apartment, she was giving him many more drinks, and then she was coerced into having relations with Diddy. Once he finished his business, then Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to do the same thing with him. Now, as if all of this wasn't bad enough, now this woman, whose name, by the way, is Liza Gardner, uh, she's finally put her name out there, uh, but she says that she was 16 years old when all of these things allegedly happened. Yeah, this is getting even worse. Please pay attention. And let's not forget that she had a friend with her and she claims that uh, they did the same thing to her friend. Uh, so I'm just curious as to what age her friend was at the time that all of this happened and if that information is going to come out. I'm pretty sure that it will. Yeah, it's pretty bad for Diddy. And it keeps getting worse day by day. Please pay attention. In February, Com's former producer and videographer filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, alleging Com sexually harassed drugged and threatened him. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Jones, or Real Rod, worked on Calm's most recent album, Love, and lived with him between September 2022 and November 2023. Jones alleges he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims, Jones woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs and two sex workers. He alleges the music mogul drugged him. Hello everyone, um, until further notice I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me it just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that so just moving forward um just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work i appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me etc thank you so much a man named rodney jones has come forward to sue diddy and this is not your average lawsuit I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer. And he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. He's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. This is perhaps the biggest claim is that Diddy and his son murdered someone in plain daylight and got away with it. But there's apparently a man that they know, that everyone who works with any knows, that they can call and they essentially will get everything cleaned up. And they are implicating the LAPD in this madness because they produced fake reports. And he's got some real good evidence to back up these claims. He says that one evening, uh, during a camp that they were running with several musicians, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were in a heated conversation with somebody named G. And while this conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom that was adjacent to where Jones was sitting, he heard approximately two feet away from him again, Mr. Jones is the producer that's suing him, gunshots suddenly ringing out. He recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and fear that he would be shot next. He genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and his son exited. 
G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and his hip area. Everyone stood around and looked up at him. Frustrated by the lack of aid that was being provided, Mr. Jones, the producer that's suing again, dropped everything, ran to the guy, and immediately began placing pressure. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, he realized that G was gushing blood from another area. He decided to lift G up and place him to sit on the toilet, and he asked the crowd to call the ambulance. In April, a separate lawsuit was filed against Combs' son, Christian Combs, in which a woman alleged that the 26-year-old drugged her and sexually assaulted her on a yacht chartered by the music mogul in December 2022. Son, Christian, drugged and sexually assaulted her. The lawsuit alleges that an audio recording made during the night in question is evidence of the woman denying his advances as he gropes her. The plaintiff's lawyer provided those clips to NBC News. In one recording, a woman believed to be the alleged victim is heard saying, Excuse me, you don't touch my Please legs like that. I'll move my legs the way I want to. Uh, okay. If I want to do this, then I will. <laughs> you don't touch my legs like that. Soon after, according to the lawsuit, Christian speaks and tries to get her to stay. Who can I talk to? I'm going to say you. Requ I requested you right now. Well, you can take your hand off my for the first thing. According to the lawsuit, the alleged victim then left the recording studio and attempted to resume her stewardess duties. But the suit alleges Christian found her again this time asking her to find him a place to sleep. She claims she showed him to a cinema area, but instead of resting, she alleges in the suit that he became violent and wouldn't let her leave. He groped her, the lawsuit claims, took his clothes off, grabbed her arms, and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. The woman claims she fought him off until someone else walked in. The lawsuit includes photos of a bruised forearm, allegedly the victims. Then, in May, another suit was filed in federal court by Crystal McKinney, who alleges Combs forced her to perform oral sex on him in 2003. The former model claims that she met Combs when she was 22 during a Men's Fashion Week event in New York. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. It explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag, and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night, or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information of belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. 
The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. On May 24, April Lampros became the seventh person to file a suit against Combs, accusing him of drugging and assaulting her over several years beginning in 1995, per NBC. Lampros claims she first met Combs in 1994 when she was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology. When she met Mr. Combs, Miss Lampros shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Miss Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, the Daily Blossom says, happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Miss Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampro, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. A clip of R&B crooner Usher talking about living with a music mogul, Sean Diddy Combs, when he was 13 years old, has resurfaced on social media. Something Diddy. called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some. Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to. In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was. <laughs> and it was. But I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was. It was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was crazy. tried to. You know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh-huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh-huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim. Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jody C, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what, I and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. Anyone would be damned to send anyone minor or not to Diddy's mansion. Some of the craziest have been told about that home and what has happened in it. And I do not want to get nightmares at night. 